Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. I'm your host, Winston Wells, with a pineapple wine coming out of my head. I'm delighted that you're joining us today. Where Every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. And joining me in the studio today, I'm especially pleased to have Sonny Monteiro and Dave Stevens, all founding board members of the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. And we've got our lovely logo right behind us. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. How do you love this color? I mean, it's just popping, isn't it? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, in full disclosure, I'm also on the board and happy to be on the board with you. It's been such a great pleasure getting to know you. Actually, that's probably one of the amazing things about this is just getting to, to, to know you all. So uh, we have this logo that was designed at <laughs> <laughs> address the logo in the room first. So oh, it's, it's a beautiful a, framing. It's, it's a beautiful <laughs> framing. Winston. So pineapple is a symbol of wealth. It's a mm -hmm. symbol of welcome. And it's a symbol of our lovely Aloha state. So I think we've got uh, really good symbolism there. Uh, even if it's sprouting out of my head for this part of the show, it's going to be OK. <laughs> and uh, right down here, we see that we're a, an affiliate chamber of the uh, NGLCC, the National LGBT Chambers of Commerce. So that's great. So as you know, we, we, we heard about, OK, the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. It's an interesting idea. So what is the Hawaii Rainbow Ch Chamber of Commerce? Perhaps, Sonny, you could uh, read along as this, uh, we find out what it is, because I think it's a new idea for a lot of people. So if we could get that graphic up there for what we are. Sure. Um, the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce represents small businesses, individuals, corporations, and nonprofit associations whose members share the values of promoting equality and diversity within the workplace. Um, we empower the LGBTQ plus businesses to gain new skills and access um, resources through education, training, and events connecting the community <coughs> as well as its allies. Um, we advocate for equality of opportunity in business and society for the LGBTQ plus community. We work with companies, governmental agencies, and nonprofits to promote diversity, inclusion, and equality in the workplace. Most importantly, we help expand your business by connecting you with other people. Okay. Thank wow, you, you read so well. I'm so envious. Well, you know what? <laughs> thank it's you. It's important to take time to read that because it is this new concept of it's a chamber of commerce fundamentally, mm -hmm. right? We're here to, to grow business for, for everybody. But some people might ask, why do we why do we need an LGBTQ plus chamber of commerce? Um, I think it's just representation. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I, we have the Filipino Chamber of Commerce. We have the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. We have, uh, in most places, we have a Junior Chamber of Commerce. And, yeah. and in a lot of places, we have the uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce and the Japanese Chamber of Commerce. Well, this is a community of people that includes a diverse range of individuals who I think are underrepresented in, in our communities. Yeah. They could be part of the Filipino or the Japanese or the Chinese uh, Chambers of Com Commerce, but they're not represented as themselves in the LGBTQ plus community, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, and they are members of all of those communities as well. So uh, you have something to add to that, Sunny, as far as why, why we need it? A, a I do, it's just, a, it's a very interesting time politically. Um, there's a lot of um, political, with the new freedom of religion policies that are going on in government, it kind of makes it a head-to-head -head combat between equality and freedom of religion. Um, and I think that rather than then heading to the courtrooms to battle, we can just make it known where where we're welcome, which are places that I would like to spend my money and, and diversify and grow, and and hopefully there's a lot of inclusion versus separation. Yeah, it's a good point, is because the lines somehow, and I think most fair-minded and real Amer uh, uh, true American values, we do value equality of opportunity. We value equality of opportunity, even if it doesn't always make itself absolutely realized in the real world, we at least w want to enshrine this in our, in our documents. And I think as we see a lot of surveys, uh, younger people especially, this is, their, this is their issue. If they don't have equality uh, for the company that they're working for, the place where they're shopping, they're out of there. That's, that's just it. Right. And so for, from a company's perspective, if you're not on board with this, 
uh, you're going to your business is soon going to be dwindling. I suppose you could cater to a minority market of, uh, of people that um, prefer something else, but I think that being on the right side of history, being on the right side of, of being a human, um, and being on the right side of being uh, with business is combining all together to to produce this. But it is good to know where. Where can we shop? Where who's going to promote our services and, and our goods? Um, Brings us to our logo. We have a sticker logo we're coming up with. We're going to give it to people to put in the window. Okay, or maybe let's put see, it on their website. Let's see this, the shot of the logo if we can uh, get it up there because it is a beautiful logo. There it is. In our, our pineapple and uh, beautiful, the slogan "Aloha for all served here." I'd say to let people know that, that this is one of those places that it, it's inclusive. And it's not going to reject you because of your, your beliefs, your lifestyle. And I think that if, for a business, there's a certain amount of pragmatism involved here. You don't want to exclude any business. It's all about, like you, like you said earlier, we were talking, is all, the almighty dollar. And if you exclude people because of their, their lifestyle, you're throwing money away. So why not include everybody, really? It's a, and truly, I think, as a business owner, when I hire people, uh, I, I want people to know that they're coming into a community of inclusion and diversity because I, I think all of us have picked on in high school, picked on in junior high school, right? We, we were bullied. And if you go into a company and you see that this is an inclusive, diverse community, you know you're not going to be bullied because of your personal choices. And I think that that's a certain amount of freedom of thought that you bring into the company. And as a company owner, too, I want to have a, a lot of different viewpoints and a lot of ideas coming in, and I don't want to exclude any ideas because every idea is an opportunity for more success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we were talking earlier about when you just have a monoculture, <laughs> then you're, you're really uh, you're shortchanging yourself, your coworkers, your clients. Right. Um, you know, what strikes me is about this as far as the workplace goes, and it's, it's part of the offerings that we're gonna have is, is diversity trainings and, and working with other organizations to raise awareness in this so that we can bring our full selves to work. Because if we can't bring our full selves to work, and I say, hey, Dave, what'd you do this weekend? And you said, oh, I, uh, I just kind of hung around. Uh, and maybe you were, uh, you were hanging around, but you were with your boyfriend or your husband, or your wife in your case. And you, you might say, as a heterosexual male, well, I was with my wife and my kids, my dogs. We went to the park, we well, played you frisbee. Free, you feel free to share. You feel free to right. share. You have a picture of her on your, on your desk. And uh, you're able to talk about that very easily. But if you're not out at work, and I say, hey, what'd you do this weekend, Sonny? And you're, yeah, you're like, trying to hide it. Yeah. You're trying to put, put up a shield, put up a wall. Yeah. Right. And you're not your complete self at work. And yeah. really, as an employer, when you, when you try to empower employees to do the best that they can do, if they're not completely 100% engaged, you're not going to get all the productivity out of that employee because they're holding back because they're, they're reserved. They think they have something to hide. And if they put themselves all the way out there, someone might find out and then they feel like they're not going to be included in the group anymore. Well, and I feel that reserved is kind of the standard. It's very difficult to, to put that on at work, um, to be the only one, to be the first one. Hmm. Um, and what you're saying is absolutely true about getting the most from somebody. Like when you find that world of inclusion, um, it feels so good and so freeing that you you truly devote yourself to whatever that business is because you've experienced something that's unique and original, right? You have a place, a home where you can be yourself and be comfortable. Um, and for a lot of people, especially in Hawaii, I think that they don't even get that in their own house sometimes. Yeah. If, yeah. We, if we look at the homeless population in Hawaii, there's a huge percentage of that population that is LGBTQ plus because they've received that rejection at home already. Um, right. So to be kicked out of your house, right, is a possibility. And then to find a place where you can go to work and be yourself would completely change that, that structure, that database of memories that you have, that inclusion. Um, and it's, it's very important to have in the community. It's a really good point that you bring up because I know in surveys they found up, uh, up to 40% of kids on the street are LGBTQ. So this is a real issue and, and they're being shortchanged as well. And historically, of course, not historically, still in our great United States of America, you can be fired for being gay or lesbian in 28 states, I think, still. You can be fired for being trans in at least that many, not states. more. 30 states. 30 states, right. Yeah, so I could just walk in and say, you know what, you're gay, or actually, I think you're gay, and I don't like gay people, so you're fired. Fortunately, here in Hawaii, we are protected because we are a state that, that is diverse and values diversity, but uh, when we still face these same problems, and I think a lot of, um, you know, 
even even in Hawaii, there's still uh, a lot of discrimination that we might face. It might be more subtle, and we may not even know it. Um, these are, these are exceptional challenges in these times, especially because Sonia brought up our current presidential administration. We've flip-flopped on this issue at the federal level many times. For instance, when I first joined the Marine Corps, it was illegal to be gay. You could be arrested and thrown in jail if you lied that said you weren't gay. Because if you said you were gay, you couldn't come in uh, and serve your country. Uh, then they said, don't ask, don't help. So don't ask, don't tell, well, for several years, like a couple decades, and then we've changed the policy again, and then we went back again, and so people don't want to come out because they think, oh, I'm safe now, but in a couple of years, a new administration comes in, new president, new rules, and I might not be safe, I'll be kicked out. And we're doing that now to people who are serving the country. So I think at our level, we have to make sure we're consistent that's a really good point. Uh, you know, consistency and inclusion, and Hawaii is pretty good at that. Yeah. Uh, we, we still got to chip away at some of the edges. We're hard around the edges still, but uh, I think we're doing better than a lot of other states. Yeah. But we got to be consistent. If we flip flop, we've we've buried ourselves again. We won't be able to get that traction. Well, and, and I think it bears out in it, it, that the business world is ahead of it. It, it gets it. it, it the business uh, we're reading here, the Fortune 500 companies, it's something like you know 95 percent of them have inclusive policies for LGBTQ people because they realize they have to. I mean, it's just it's it's the, not just the right thing to do, but it's the right thing to do for the almighty dollar. And while our government might go back and forth and up and down, or we might have some um, call them cults uh, of thought. <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not be supportive. That we do need to be consistent. We need to be a place that that uh, supports and values people for who they are. And especially in this area where people, you're, sorry, if you're just you're gay or or you want to be gay, it doesn't really matter if you are identifying in this group. And we have the LGBTQ plus or other alf alphabet letters that we couldn't include but the allies is a really is a really critical point here and I think that um, you know we don't get anywhere without allies and friends and so this is a I think a, a, a key part of our organization and I think it's reflected in our board of directors that it's you know uh, it has a diversity of um, orientation on it as well, well you don't have to be part of that community to support that community that's right right uh, I support it because my, me personally, I grew up a long military family. I mean, we, we've gone all the way back to the Revolutionary War. We always stood up, wore the uniform for rights in America. If you're a United States citizen, you get all the rights everyone else does, period. Doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, you're from another culture, you're another religion, you're Muslim, doesn't matter. You get the rights. And I truly believe that this group of people has been alienated and ostracized for their way of life, and they're not getting the full experience that all Americans should get. And that's why I'm an ally. Uh, and it's well put, uh, you know. So, and, and we uh, applaud all of our allies because it's like that we're we're stretching for the higher ideal of America and our our own humanity, and and we're doing it through business because business is uh, the, sort of the great equalizer in our country. We're not communists here, right? So we we do right. need, we we understand that how all of this works. Now, Sonny, have you experienced any discrimination in the workplace um, for anything? Um, you know, I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had a lot of, of workplace discrimination, um, but I have always been in management um, in different roles, and I know um, how easily it would be to get away with things like that. Um, you don't need to necessarily make it so black and white where you literally seclude one person so obviously, um, but in the background, I think that it's definitely something that, that happens and occurs. And with the chamber, we're not aiming for exclusion, yeah. right? And I think that that's really important on the conversation yes. of allies, right? Yeah. Is that there's no exclusion. Like we're not trying to exclude anybody. Yeah. Um, the whole point is inclusion. And if you support equality in any way, um, you're welcome to join the chamber. And that's what you're saying with the allies is yeah. a very important point. Yeah. Um, all all money is is green and spends the same. And at the same time, I don't want us to have all of my money going to places that don't equally support me or wouldn't hire me. It's a good point. Um, it's not something that I would like yeah, to Along those to lines, too, when, when people invest in a company, when you, when you purchase stock or, or you buy into a company, right, if that company supports things like this, uh, I think it's easier for people to invest in it. Now, we've always seen people in uh, the public sphere, they're serving publicly, and gun rights advocates who invest in you know, rifle companies and ammunition companies, they're being ostracized by their own supporters because they have portfolios that include companies that sell weapons and ammunition. 
So if you invest, even in a diverse portfolio, you could be singled out as somebody who doesn't support the right side of history. And in this yep. case, if you're part of this group, you're actually adding to your bottom line when it comes to an investment portfolio. People are going to buy into this. And it's it's a good point that we'll take up right after the break, uh, <laughs> at, at, because we do. It's all it is. It's, it's a good point, Sonny. We're supporting equality and diversity in the workplace. Yeah. That doesn't require a label. It requires just a will and, right. and, and goodwill. Right. Uh, so we are. <laughs> I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on Think Tech <laughs> Live uh, Streaming <laughs> Network series. And I am here today, delighted to be talking with Sonny Monteiro and Dave Stevens, founding board members of the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. And we'll be back in a minute. Do you like my pineapple? <laughs> so stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Won't you buy me? Hi, we're back for a while. <laughs> I'm Winston Welch with the pineapple coming out of my head. I'm going to sit to the side so you can see this. Uh, I'm on Think Tech live streaming network series talking with Sonny Monteiro and Dave Stevens, a couple of the amazing founding board members of the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. So welcome back. And uh, Thank you. I, I do love our logo. I'm proud of our logo. It's, it's cheerful and happy. And it sure is. Yeah. So um, we, we are actually having a launch uh, next week on Monday, June yes. 25th. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and where, when, why, how we how we get into that? Yes, so it is a Meet the Chamber event. We're very excited to host it. Um, anybody that thinks that they want to be a member that is a member, um, board members, um, inclusionists, all welcome, all are welcome here, as is our, our theme. Um, it's going to be a Gordon Biersch. That's going to be on Monday, June 25th from 5.30 to 7 p.m., We'll have poo-poos available. Um, please come. Please bring a friend. Do make sure that you RSVP online. That would be very helpful. Um, but we can't wait to see Gotta you have there. enough food. Gotta have gotta, enough gotta food. Gotta have a good gotta account. Have food. Uh, we, ought to, we ought to tell our, our mainland people, if you're coming out here for a visit and you just happen to be here on June 25th, please come by. Uh, free food, but please respond so we have enough to feed you. And it happens at the famous Aloha Tower. Yeah, it's a great location, and uh, we're, we're going to be having some pretty exciting announcements there. I think we can probably preview some of them. Uh, one is that we're offering some specials of membership huge that's huge, that's huge. so yeah. what are a couple things that we're going to be doing there um so we're going to be upgrading memberships from our base level our bronze level um anybody that getting any level so from bronze you'll be upgraded to silver silver to gold gold to platinum and and um, etc um, so it's a great opportunity it literally doubles the value of your chamber um, the membership levels have huge events there are some available at a lower level if it's not something that is um, super foreseeable for you right now yeah um, but there's no better time to join along with the, the free upgrade you also come in as a founding member which is a title that you will always keep um, it says that you were there from the beginning um, and we're there to help through the whole line so it's a great time to come in right at the beginning okay and we're going to extend memberships through the end of December for people that, that join now as well uh, next year so that you'll get a little bit of value. Thank you for joining early and as we're learning how to tailor some of our, our offerings to you. So I think there's a, a we're also going to have some really great announcements, um, which I can pr probably preview as a uh, University of Phoenix is going to be offering a Toastmasters group for the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce to have us develop our speaking and, and, and public um, yeah, public speaking skills. So who can't <laughs> hear from that so we don't trip over our words? And that's already on our calendar. Coming on our website. <laughs> if you look at our calendar on the uh, HawaiiRainbowChamber.org website, that's already there. Uh, it is already yeah. there, but we have been piggybacking thus far onto the uh, another group. So after that, we will have our own group, and University of Phoenix is a great founding 
um, a member of the chamber uh, as well. We're going to be having an exciting announcement actually from the um, Small Business Administration as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, we'll be meeting other new members of the chamber and all the members of the board there too. So uh, we'll be open there from about five o'clock onwards. Yep. Uh, to welcome people and like you said, heavy poo poos and a no host bar and. Uh, uh, it should be a great a great time. Uh, so please do come out and meet the chamber. Uh, you'll meet these lovely folks and others as well. So uh, and we're all fun. Yeah, we're we, we are really all fun. fun. People. It's true. It's, it's fun to hang out with us. The pineapples coming out of our head. <laughs> There's no shortage of a love. No shortage of a love. <laughs> so uh, well, as long as it's up here, we can see we're part of the NGLCC. So this is a national organization, and it's one of our ben benef uh, benefits of membership, which is that we can uh, get certified as. Uh, diversity suppliers, minority diversity suppliers. So what does that mean? Uh, it's, it's that fair-minded governments and corporations have literally hundreds of billions of dollars that they allocate towards minority diversity spend. Yeah. And you got to be certified to get this. So we are the sole certifier here in Hawaii. But as benefit of membership, you get you get that waived. Um, and it's just one of the many benefits of memberships that we have that maybe we can touch on a few of them uh, under that uh, colorful graphic that we had there but that's one and there's a wonderful meeting that happens this year in Philadelphia so if you're able to join uh, the chamber and, and come out to Philadelphia uh, there's a uh, I think this year Martha Stewart's going to be a speaker and um, Adam Rapone is going to be a speaker but it's just a love fest of about a, a thousand 1200 people from all around the world that come in and they're just there to build better chambers uh, for networking um, you know you personal development and they're just super nice people uh, as well so uh, the other benefits of membership that we have here I think we might be able to touch on some of these um, what do we call those Dave the uh, the benefits of membership <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky wording it's it tricky is. wording we're still working that out <laughs> so networking is network uh, maybe that if you can find the other one in there Ray that that's it's so we got networking so one of our there networking <laughs> events that's perfect is that uh, starting off next week on the 25th so if people want to find out about this they can go to our website or our Facebook page yes absolutely Facebook or, is uh, Facebook LinkedIn um, Hawaii Rainbow Chamber uh, you can find us on any of those things that all the invitations are there with a link to the evite which you are more than welcome to rsvp for it is a free event um, and it's going to be a heck of a good time and we've also got it on eventbrite so people could search by eventbrite they could search by evite um, you could put in Hawaii Rainbow Chamber. You could probably just put in Rainbow and search from there and, and it'll pop up. Uh, we've got a member directory listing. So uh, what's the purpose of the member, dir a member directory? Well, if you want to reach out to other companies that also feel the same way as you do, they have an inclusive nature and they, they want to be part of this community, mm -hmm. that, they're listed there if they're members of our of our community. Mm -hmm. You can go out and, and use their services. If you really want to know how to go and find a business that is part of the LGBTQ community or supporters, you can find them in their, our directory. Uh, I guess that's a, a, a real great benefit of membership is whatever you can do to increase your bottom line, but also to let the community know when we walk in and they say, oh, my wife and I, whether you're a woman or a man, you're going to be treated equally with yeah. respect, and they're just going to say, oh, okay, yeah, this is what's our situation, rather than, oh, I'm not, uh, right. <laughs> right, it's, abs it's absolutely huge. Um, yeah. Anybody that's part of the, the community knows that there's always a stumble on words when you introduce your same-sex partner. Um, and this, this, the point is to go without explanation, um, and even more so to go without being... Um, discriminate against. So if you walk into a place, um, you're not going to have to wonder whether or not they're going to bake your cake or not. You don't need to go through the whole right. process. Yes. You don't need to fall in love with a product or right. a service that you're absolutely in love with and then get to the end and then they, they say, you know what, um, we, don't, we don't serve your kind here. Yeah. Um, so th that's, right. I think that's the main point is that we don't need to um, juggle through these things. If you are a business that is in the directory, all the LGBTQ plus community knows that their business, their money, their services, their their everything is welcome there, and that is that is absolutely huge. And if you're part of the community, you know that that is a tremendous advantage. Um, it just saves a lot of shame, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain. Um, and we can jump right to that rather than having to get to the bottom line and then find out that we're not welcome. Yeah. Now this can add to the bottom line of 70% like of our business here in the state I think is tourism based. Yeah. So if people come here from other states and other countries and they are part of the LGBTQ plus community, they can go to our director and they can find businesses to support what they want to do. 
And so the more members we get, the more people that are in our business directory, the easier it is for people to come and just have a good time without having to hunt down a business that supports them. Yeah, we don't. We don't ever want to exclude anyone that comes to our place. Uh, yeah, aloha. Yeah, I think I mean a lot of that. You hear anecdotally that a lot of straight women love to go to gay bars because they can feel comfortable and relaxed. There. <laughs> <laughs> and but I think that's true in general that that uh, fair-minded people want to support businesses that if if all things are equal and you have a choice of joining a company that's supportive or buying a product or service and like Dave, you were saying if if it's local and it's in your price range, you're going to buy the local here, especially you want to support in your community. You want to support Absolutely. your community. You, uh, you want to uh, support that, that the things that you value as well. So I think that's, that's a, it's a key. And uh, uh, I should get out our website too, which is Hi Rainbow Chamber, H I Rainbow Chamber dot org, uh, where people can find a whole bunch of information. We're rolling out stuff all the all the time, but um, you should also add that you can resources. you can look that up in Google, and it always comes up. Okay. Hawaii Rainbow Chamber always comes up with we're, the right website. We're at the top. We're at the top. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're going to be having a lot of uh, business builder workshops. Um, uh, for example, our, our own Dave is going to be teaching someone cybersecurity and right. scaring so, the bejesus out of us. <laughs> Kapu technology, you know, that's what we do. We scare the crap out of people. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, but uh, these workshops are, are, are about how to set up your business in a safe and secure way mm -hmm. so you don't, uh, you don't fall victim to some of the malware that's out there and some of the attacks that are going on. So we'll be offering some of those workshops to help people set up their 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 networks and their Wi-Fi routers and their uh, point of sale systems because you can't always afford to bring in a big company to do these massive upgrades and and put all these secure features in sometimes you have to do it on your own and so we're there to help and uh, so password one two three is <laughs> yeah, always use that. Yeah, always like space balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've also One, done a lot of other two. things here I, I, as we're quickly running out of time. But we're going to have great speaker events, lots of uh, educational workshops. We're going to have regular networking things too that will take place throughout the day, morning, afternoon, evening, as we develop and we find out what our members have. And we listen to our members and other people. And we took a huge survey of people at the Pride event. I remember we 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 said, give us your ideas. Right. right. Yep. So we're listening to our community to say, here's what we want in this chamber. And I think that's that's part of it, that what we have is that we're listening. We want to do right by the members. And we also want to be a voice in the community so that people, whether it's politicians or corporations or whatever, can come to us and say, yeah, I need some help in this. I, I need right. To, I don't understand this issue. Explain right. It to can me, you help right? it? Can yeah. you help us out? And so that's exactly what we're looking to do. Um, and I think one of the, the neatest things about this is is that uh, the meaningful connections that we're able to make out of this. I got to you know get to know the two of you really well, and that's been a, a real joy and a joy for me. And and in this world where we're so cyber connected, when we sit down and we work on an issue that's important to us, it's a different way that we can connect with other. And I think we, especially now, we long for connection that's that's meaningful and deep, that's very true. and working on something that that that's towards the common good. So um, that's uh, for me. I think one of the uh, you know I love the community aspect of it, but uh, fundamentally we're a chamber of commerce, so we're all of this stuff and pineapples coming out of our head, <laughs> <laughs> all part of it. So we do welcome people to come next. Uh, Monday, June 25th, Gordon Biersch, 5.30 at Aloha Tower Marketplace. Um, and also, if you park in the University of Phoenix garage at Topa Tower, they will validate your parking. Uh, and that's is, right across the street. Yep. It is, it's which is another thing for parking. our friends at, uh, at, at University of Phoenix for that, uh, as, as well as all of our, our early supporters and members. And for those of you out there who are thinking about it, come by and see what we're like and uh, meet us and we'll talk story. and. Um, see that you are indeed welcome and we will help you and support you in every way that we can. So with that, I have been delighted to have you guys on the show. <laughs> and I really appreciate you <laughs> coming you here. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yes, and we will obviously come back again and do this more. We'll have a debrief afterwards and we'll talk about what we've learned and, and all of that. Okay. So, okay, sound yeah. good? That I sounds like great. I come share your... Yeah. You want to be in the pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> There's a pineapple coming out. <laughs> anyway, I uh, really appreciate you guys. <laughs> and we will have a lot of fun next week, but for right now, we are out of time and have to wrap it up. So. I am Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on Think Tech Live streaming network series. We have been talking with Sonny Monteiro and Dave Stevens, two of our amazing uh, founding board members of the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> you can find out more information at highrainbowchamber.org or on the Facebook page or on the LinkedIn page. We uh, welcome your feedback. Thanks for tuning in, and aloha.